Okay, 7.2 is all about series. So series is the idea that we're summing a sequence of numbers. So some things, just to kind of start us off here, is we're going to look at the summation. So that kind of looks like an E, um, but it suddenly represents sigma, which is called the summation. And we're going to look at the bottom. The top is going to be the index, so that's where you start and at where you end. And then the A sub K is like the function we're doing it at. So let's write out what the following sums mean. So in this case, we're starting when n is 1, and we're going to n is 5, right? And then we're doing it with n cubed. So we're doing 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed, right? So you're just plugging in 1 through 5, and then we're going to go ahead and add those together. Um, I should have already done that, sorry, plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed gives you a total of 225. Okay, on this next one, similar idea, we're doing 3 to the first plus 3 to the second plus 3 to the third plus 3 to the fourth plus 3 to the fifth. And if we add all those together, we end up with 363. This next one's a little different because we're now going from 1 to 4. There's kind of two parts of it. So we're doing negative 1 to the first and then times 1 squared. And then we're doing plus negative 1 to the second times 2 squared plus negative 1 to the third times 3 squared, and then plus negative 1 to the fourth times 4 squared. So here we'll get a negative 1, and then we get a positive 4, a negative 9, and a positive 16. When we add those together, we end up with 10. Okay, now let's go back and let's actually Given these sequences, let's write what the summation notation would look like. So here we would probably start with n equals 1, or you could do k, whatever you want. And we usually start with 1 because it makes life easier. But here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I would just notice the sequence. In this case, it's arithmetic, so we could just say, hey, we start at 401, plus our difference is 1, and we do our n minus 1 times 1. You can simplify that if you want, but in this case, we're doing the summation of that. Sometimes I use an extra set of parentheses, just so you know that's the whole equation. In the next one, it looks like we're subtracting 3. So similar, we're going to do our n equals 1. We have our first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven terms. So that will be the top number. Our first term is 14, plus our n minus 1, times our difference is now a negative 3. Okay. This last case looks like you're timesing by 4. So, same thing, starting with 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. We're going to end with 4 on the top. Our first term is 7. Our ratio here is that 4 times n minus 1. Okay, um, just to give you some like background. So, Carl Friedrich Gauss was a German mathematician who contributed in many ways to the fields of mathematics and science and is touted as one of the history's most influential mathematicians. As the story goes, when Gauss was a young boy, he was given the problem to add the integers from 1 to 100. Remember, there was no calculators in those days. So the problem that I would have had you solve or kind of think about in class is how do we get that answer without using a calculator? So what Gauss noticed is that as he added these numbers together, and then he went backwards on the other end, so 100 plus 99 plus 98, etc., he noticed that the first and last number, and then the second and the second to last number, and then the third and the third to last number, when we add them together, always gave him 101. So in this case, he said, well, okay, there's going to be 50 pairs, and those pairs are each 101, so the total here must be 550. So, as other students struggle with the lengthy addition problem, Gauss saw a different way to attack it, right? And so he came up with the sum of a finite 
arithmetic series to be s sub n, which means the sum of that series, of n of how many you're adding together divided by 2, right? How many pairs you have. And then you take the first plus the last term. Once again, this is given to you on your formula sheet. Okay. Whereas the sum of a geometric series is going to be s sub n equals the first term, 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And this kind of down below here gives you a proof. Um, it says, see if you can finish it. Here, if we factor out an s sub n, you get that 1 minus r. And then you have a sub 1 that you can factor out. That should be 1 there. Of both terms here. So then you get 1 minus r to the n there. If I divide both sides by 1 minus r, we do get the formula that we just had. a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. I'm going to leave that there that if you want to go through it, great. you got to proof. If you don't want to, fair enough. So it says evaluate each partial sum. So in this case, you got to first identify, okay, the partial sum of s sub 7 for a geometric sequence with a sub 1 equals 6 and r equals 4, the ratio equals 4. So the biggest thing here, I would say, is just knowing which formula you're using, which in this case, we're going to use... S sub n, which in this case is S sub 7, equals the first term, which is 6, 1 minus the ratio, which is 4, to the n power, which is 7, all over 1 minus the ratio, which is 4. It's up to you how you want to evaluate that. I probably would use a calculator to at least figure out what the top is. Negative 98,298 divided by a negative 3. If you do type it in all at the same time, make sure you put a parenthesis around the bottom. So the sum here is 32,766. Okay. On this next one, even though they used I, don't be confused by that. We are simply talking about a geometric, um, sorry, an arithmetic se series here, right? Where is that first one was geometric? You could use N similarly. And we'll probably have a better choice here. So in this case, we're going to do s sub 6 equals our 6 divided by 2, our first term. So this is where you got to plug in something. So 3 times 1 is 3. So our first term is 3. Plus, the last one we're doing is 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. So plus 18. So we're doing 3 times 21. So we get 63. Okay, the next one here, we're doing 7, negative 21, 63. This looks like it's geometric. And here, our ratio is a negative 3. So we're doing S of 18 equals 7, 1 minus a negative 3 to the 18th, all over 1 minus a negative 3. And you definitely can type that all in your calculator at the same time, as long as you use the parentheses around the bottom. This is a really, really big number, 677,985,854. Okay, on this next one, oh, I think I decided, let's actually skip this one. We'll make life a little easier. Okay, so let's do now the partial sum um, of the of S of 12, of an arithmetic sequence, our first term is 9, our difference is 4. So S of 12 equals 12 divided by 2. Our first term is 9 plus, you got to do a little work to find the 12th term, right? So A sub 12 equals 9 plus 12 minus 1 times 4. That should be something we're familiar with from the last lesson. So 4 plus 11 times 4 is 53. So plus 53. So we're going to have 6 times 62, and we end up with 3,844. Okay. Then we've got some applications here. So Cindy devised a week-long study plan to prepare for finals. On the first day, she plans to study for one hour. Each consecutive day, she'll increase her time by 30 minutes. 
So, um, how many hours will um, Cindy have studied after one week? So, we got a few things, right? We're talking about days there, but then we got weeks. So, I maybe would say, hey, one week is seven days. Same thing. We got one hour. We got 30 minutes. I think hours are a little easier to deal with. So, let's call this 0.5 or half an hour. So, do we have an arithmetic or a geometric one? In this case, this is arithmetic. So, we're looking at S sub 7. So we're going to have our 7 divided by 2. Our first day we study for an hour, but we got to figure out the seventh day. So on the seventh day, we start with 1 hour. We do 7 minus 1 times 0 0.5. And we end up with 4, days on the, four hours on the last day. So we get 7 and a half times 5. And we end up with 35 halves, which is 17.5 hours. Okay, so on April 1st of every year for 25 years, Andrea deposits $2,000 into an IRA, which pays an APR of 10% compounded annually. If she makes no withdrawals, how much will she have um, at the end of 25 years? So in this case, you can think about this rate as um, geometric, right? It's going to multiply. So we're going to do... S sub 25 years, right? And we're going to have the initial amount, which is 2,000. And then 1 plus her rate, which you should do as a decimal of 10% to the 25th. And then we are going, oh, sorry, 1 minus her rate to the 25th all over 1 minus her rate. So then as you type that in, you end up with, oh, I, I forgot. So if she's actually adding another, so that gave you 222,000, but that would just give you the amount of interest. If she adds, so notice how she deposits on April 1st, every, every year she deposits that much. So her rate is actually, so rather than it just being the 10%, it's 10% 10 plus 100% because she's depositing the initial amount. So it really should be like 110%. So this should be 1.1 in our equation. Okay, we're good now. So we got 1.1. At the end of 20 years, she has 196,694.12. Good lesson about saving for retirement there. Okay, then last, we have um, our sum for a finite one, and we're talking about, okay, what's going to happen as things go to infinity? So as something goes to infinity, right, and our ratio has to be less than 1, the r to the n will go closer and closer to zero. Because if we have some fraction and we raise it to a higher and higher power, it's going to be closer and closer to zero. So therefore, we would be left with a sub 1 times just 1 on the top, or 1 minus 0, all over 1 minus the rate. So our form for an infinite geometric series is going to be a sub 1 all over 1 minus r. Once again, this formula is given to you, but the thing you have to know is that if r is greater than or equal to 1, then it's not going to be defined. Okay, so let's look at these ones. So here we got 4 to 1 a half. So your ratio is we're timesing by a half. So remember, dividing by 2, we're always going to talk about multiplication for our ratio, so that's going to be a half. So our sum for infinity is going to be our first term, which is 4, all over 1 minus a half. So we're going to have 4 over a half, so we get 8. Okay, on this one, though, we're doing the sum from 1 to infinity, this time of 3 halves. There's an issue here. This one um, is going to be... There's no finite sum, right? Like So it's going to be like infinity. So this one, um, I forget the word we say, but um, basically it's not going to work here, right? The sum is not defined. There we go. 
because since that ratio is not less than one, as we add larger and larger numbers, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. There's no finite limit there. This last one of 1 to infinity of 4 times negative 1 fourth will have a limit. So the sum, as we go to infinity, is going to be the first term. So let's plug in for the first term. We plug in 1 minus 1, we get 4 times negative 1 half to the 0, which is going to be just 4 times 1. So we do get 4, and then 1 minus your ratio is negative 1 half. So we're going to have 4 over 3 halves, <coughs> or 1 plus 1 half. So we end up getting <coughs> sorry, 4 times 2 thirds, so 8 thirds. All right. That's it for...